All right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Alex Lopez Talks on the Alex Lopez Rocks YouTube channel. I am Alex Lopez from the Alex Lopez Band, and joining me today is the amazing, incomparable Ashley Hasiotis. Did I, I got it right that time, right? Hasiotis. Hasiotis. I always mess it up, <laughs> but even still, incomparable. <laughs> Uh, she is the she is a wonderful energy healer. Uh, does some amazing work with Reiki, and she's also the founder of OneMission.org. Um, I actually did not know that those were two parallels in your world until getting to know you better. Yeah. Yep. Thanks for having me. I'm oh, super excited. Thank you for being here. Um, now, the first time we actually met um, a friend of ours, uh, the late, great Rachel Marshall, mm -hmm. um, re uh, referred me to you for a Reiki and healing session. Mm -hmm. And while I won't go into details of the question that's, that, you know, that you asked just for my own personal privacy, but <laughs> you had made a statement and a question there that was like this holy crap moment for me. It's like, oh, wow. Because, you know, sometimes with certain things, you you walk in a little skeptical. You're not sure how it's going to work out for you. And literally the first words out of your mouth were, okay, who's this in, in this area of your life? And I'm like, how does she know? <laughs> so it, it literally was one of those situations where you wouldn't even be able to add. It was one of those things where you wouldn't know unless somebody or something was whispering it in your ear kind of situation. Yeah. And, and you nailed it almost immediately with what I was dealing with at the time. Oh, my God. Well, I'm dying to know. You're going to have to tell me offline what that oh, yeah. was. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, That's so, cool. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So, Ashley, um, like I was ta talking about, what made you get into uh, Reiki and energy healing? Oh, boy. So um, I've actually, I feel like I've answered this question three times in the past week, which is bizarre. Uh, so long history of being a healer, you know, and actually in my book, which is coming out in the fall, I think I have a line in there that says um, something along the lines of, you can't turn a person who was not born to be a healer into a healer. And I was, I described myself as a born healer, you know, um, and I kind of feel like trauma is really what brings us all to either receive healing or to become a healer. So I have a, a laundry list of things that I have gone through, which I won't bore everybody with um, today, but I had a, a, a really rocky, abusive childhood. Um, and then my, and then I find love. Everything's amazing. Like, love, the stars are aligning and everything's yeah. amazing. And we have um, our first child and he subsequently, uh, my firstborn Nicholas, subsequently yeah. came down with cancer when he was seven months old. Oh, wow. So if anybody here like watching or listening has been through something traumatic, you'll know like when you're in that moment, it's all about fight or flight. Like, you don't care about self-care. You don't even really understand what's happening to your body um, when you're in the middle of it. And so same for me. Um, and so then I kind of finished that trauma, if you will, and then almost immediately, like a year later, started the charity, which I know we're gonna talk about, One Mission. Mm -hmm. um, and then my niece was born and she had all sorts of abnormalities from in utero, really subsequently died 16 months later. Oh, no. And so um, I had the honor and privilege of being at bedside with my brother and sister-in-law and my niece, Evie, for 16 months. And I really feel like that was the straw that broke the camel's back for me. So I was getting my hair done, um, you know, trying back into this whole self-care thing, right? Like I looked like a, a troll because I hadn't taken care of myself, right? So I'm getting my hair done. And there's this sign right right in front of the mirror that says, does your energy need balancing? And I was like, hi. Um, I, I literally picked up the sign, walked over to the front desk, and I was like, where do I get this done? And she was like, oh, let me look in the computer. So long story short, right after I got my hair done, I went upstairs. I'd never had really any energy work at that point done. Mm -hmm. um, it was a really long time ago. And so, she, you know, I sit down with her and she's like, you know, 
So all you need to do is just relax. I was like, yep, great, sign me up. So I lay on the table and she starts doing energy work on me and I start ugly crying. I mean like blubbering mess, ugly crying. So I go through the whole thing and I started seeing like things in my head like movies, you know, like people I knew, but it was all going so fast, people I didn't know, but at the same time, everything was making sense. So it was really alarming to me. I'd never experienced anything like this before. So I sit up and she's like, so any questions? And I'm like, nope, because I was thinking to myself, like, get me the F out of here. Like, <laughs> I don't know what just happened to me, but I want to get the F out of Dodge. So like, you know, the, the course of the next couple of days, I felt amazing. And I hadn't felt that way in a really long time. Like, I felt like I was on the beam, you know, like, yeah. like physically, I felt great. Energetically, my mood was improved. Like everything felt amazing. And then over the course of like the next couple of weeks, I started to like literally slowly <clears throat> go down and down and down. Yeah. So I found her again. And I was like, I don't know what it is that you did to me, but I feel like I need to do that again. So I went to see her on the regular for probably three or six months. And one day I was leaving and I was like, hey, I was shooting the shit with her, right? So I was like, so, um, you know, what are you doing this weekend? And she was like, oh, so I'm teaching this weekend. And I was like, teaching what? She was like, this. And it just hit me like that. I was like, I'm taking, can I come? I want to learn this. She was like, absolutely. So that's kind of what started me on that whole Reiki path. It was kind of a long answer, but that's what started me on it. I love it. No, <laughs> there, there is no such thing as a long answer. I, I like as much as you want to share with us, us, I know the audience is going to appreciate and enjoy it. So please, awesome. please do. Yeah, that is awesome. Like when you have those, that moment, you know, it, it, so that's literally also your aha moment too then. Well, my aha moment, I kind of feel like was after I got my attunement. So I took the class mm -hmm. and it was like, you know, a very small class, like five or six people, which I actually really like, which is how I teach too. Um, and I mean, it was just like, I'd never experienced anything like it. You know, the energy funneling through my body, my hands were hot. I'd break out in a sweat. I could see things on these people and they were all looking at me like, how do you know this? And I was like, I don't know, but am I right? <laughs> And so it was like, you know, maybe like a couple of weeks later, like everything looked electric to me. I don't know if that happens to you after you get a session, but like yep. colors are more vibrant. You know, like I feel like I'm in my body, like all that stuff. So I was at the supermarket and this is crazy, but I was at the supermarket and I'm deaf in my left ear. I lost my hearing in 2003. So I'm deaf and, you know, so I can hear you obviously, but if you're on my left side and you're talking to me, I have to turn my head for, for, for me to hear you. So whatever, I'm at the deli counter and I hear somebody ask me a question. So I turn to the guy next to me and I was like, oh, I'm sorry, what did you say? And he looks at me, he's like, I didn't say anything. And I was like, oh, okay. So whatever, I carry on, I'm in the cereal aisle. Somebody says something to me. I turn next to the lady, I go, oh, I'm sorry, what did you say? She's like. I didn't say anything. And I'm like, now I'm starting to like freak out a little bit. So I'm like, oh my God, what's happening to me? So carry on, carry on. And now like, it's kind of like getting louder. It's like, it's kind of sounding like, like chatter, you know? Mm -hmm. So I keep asking everybody next to me, like if they, if they said something to me and finally it occurs to me, like nobody's talking to me. I'm hearing the voices of like spirits. I literally panicked. I panicked. I left my shopping cart full of stuff, got in the car, drove home, called my teacher. I was like, you need to come to my house right now. So she comes over and I tell her what happened. She starts laughing at me. And I'm like, this is, this is not funny. This is not funny. And she was like, I, I, I'm sorry, I should have told you. Like, you all, you have the gift. And I was like, no, I don't want this gift. I want you to shut this gift down. I don't have time for this and I don't want this. So she actually shut it down for me. Really? Yeah, because you can do that. She, there's wow. certain Reiki symbols that you can use to like close everything up. So yep. she did that. And I kind of was normal for like five years or so. And that then as I kind of got stronger, you know, cause I was still healing from that trauma. As I got stronger, I wanted to be able to play with it again. Yeah. So that's my, I kind of feel like that was my aha moment. Like, aha, I actually do want it. 
So then I went back and I was like, okay, let's open it up. But is there a way to like only turn the faucet a little bit? She was like, for you, probably not, but we can try. And it doesn't work like that for me. But um, I think that was my aha moment where I was like, oh no, I actually do want to do this. Yeah. See, I didn't know you could you could turn it back off because it's like for me it, it was the when it came to like energy healing work and all that stuff it always it always came off with more of a um, no if it's in you and it's supposed to be it's gonna find its way out you know yeah, yeah. so well yes yes and no to that by the way that's why all a lot of times I'll tell you like after this session don't wear your crystals for a bunch of time yep there's certain things which i that, haven't rocked in a while <laughs> there's you don't need them so right there's certain people like i don't need them on my body anymore mm -hmm. um and i didn't realize that wearing them and having them on me all the time was actually making my connection to the other side even stronger so for people like me and you yeah. who the, the, the faucets open all the time like i actually need to take a step back from the faucet just so I can have like a regular person's life. Do you know what I mean? I completely, yeah. believe me, I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah, so like it, th those first those first experiences, especially right after you get attuned are wild. I, I, when I did Reiki 1, I became like ravenous. I was like, I need to eat and I want to eat. I want like a cheeseburger and I want this and I want this. And then it's crazy because when you get attuned for like Reiki too, because uh, for our audience, there are different levels of Reiki and different levels of attunement that you're reaching to get mm -hmm. to these levels. Um, it was actually the complete opposite. I felt sick for like two or three days in between my, my, my training classes in the same week. Mm -hmm. I, um, so I was like nauseous, like yeah. my stomach was a wreck and little by little, I'm realizing it was like the, the messaging and the energy was saying, it's like, now is the time to write something down. Cause at the time I was working on an album oh. and the lyrics didn't just didn't feel right. There was stuff that wasn't being addressed. And it, like after being attuned with Reiki too, it kind of said this, is, get it all out of your system right now. You're literally, you're spiritually detoxing and you're, or we're going to release a lot of trauma right now. Oh, so wow, in between cool. those classes. So I wrote the, the lyrics to the entire album in that day. Oh, wow. So everything came out. <laughs> Literally, yeah. Literally. The first attunement typically is more of like a spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. The second attunement is very physical. Yeah. So it does. Lots of people will get like a cold or like feel like they're coming down with the flu for a couple mm -hmm. of days after that second attunement. Yeah. I, yeah. I had like severe, I had nausea okay. and it was, it was like, I was in bed. I'm like, what, what did they do to me? Yeah. <laughs> you broke like, me. What have I, what have I done? <laughs> Totally. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Good times on that. Good times yeah. on Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> so now with, um, with some of your influences, like who, like you mentioned, uh, and you don't have to name them if you don't want to, but like, were there obviously like for me, you're one of my, like, I feel like you're a mentor to me. And, oh. and there was, you know, a, a couple of other people that I felt kind of played a role in my spiritual development and manifestation in this realm of Reiki. Yeah. Um, was there, were there any people that were able to do that for you as well? Well, yes, I had two, my two different Reiki teachers, actually. My first Reiki teacher, um, uh, her name is Lucinda. She, I don't think she's actually still teaching anymore. Um, but I know she's still doing sessions. And then I used that, that was kind of like my stepping stone really. Um, and then because my psychic was opening up at such an intense rate, um, I serendipitous, serendipitously found Lisa Campion. I don't know if you know her. Oh, I do. Okay, so Lisa yep. Campion is, um, she just wrote a book, actually she's written two books now, but what her first book was called The Art of Psychic Reiki. The way that she teaches Reiki and, and this happens for her specifically because the universe knows and sends her people like me and you and who me, need yeah. to train with her because her Reiki is very psychic. It's almost like everything that was happening to me in my first time of, of taking class, mm -hmm. um, because when I put my hands on somebody, I can... I can... I read their whole body, right? I know everything. So... But that's not how my first teacher really taught me. So I kind of fell into Lisa. Um, and then I trained with her for probably three or four years. 
Oh, wow. Where I just kept taking every class that she had. Psychic development classes, Reiki classes. I helped her teach um, for a little while as like a teacher's aide. Yeah. Um, so I really feel like my method of doing Reiki is very similar to hers because it really, really fit for me. You know, um, when you're psychic, but you haven't trained, you really don't know the art of discernment, right? So like you get a bunch of hits when you have your hands on somebody, but like, well, what does that actually mean? And this is an interesting story. I had somebody, uh, I'm trying to think of who this, oh, my massage therapist. Mm -hmm. So my massage therapist said to me a couple weeks ago, before we start, I have a question for you. And I was like, okay. She said, I went and got Reiki last week. She said, and my therapist told me something and it's been really like eating me up and I wanna ask you about it. I said, okay, sure. She said, well, she kept saying that she saw like a, a unicorn with like horse feathers or something on it in my um, second chakra. And I was like waiting for the next sentence. I was like, okay, did, what else did she say? She said, that's all she said. And I'm just trying to think, figure out like why that would be. And I was like, so in my opinion, it's really important for a therapist to not just throw a bomb out like that. Mm -hmm. and not give an explanation. So yeah. when you're practicing as a psychic um, and or a healer who's psychic, discernment is important. So like for me, when I have my hands on somebody and I get a hit like that, I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Okay, great. Unicorn, wings, what more are you? I don't know. I don't understand what you're trying to tell me, right? So I have a conversation with Universal Chi basically mm -hmm. where I'm like, don't know what you're talking about. Moving on. Like I won't take every information that comes to me unless it's very crystal clear. Yeah. And then I was saying to her like, the unicorn or the horse, whatever, could have been a sign for her to tell you something, not necessarily for her to tell you about the unicorn, right? So mm -hmm. like she needs to develop that conversation with Universal Chi to figure out what does that represent? What is the message for the client? Um, and then there's tons of times where, because you remember, I don't you, when, I, when I see you in person, right? I write everything down. Oh yeah. If everything comes in at a rate where I couldn't possibly remember it all. So I write things down during session, and I only write down the things that I am very clear on. So I actually get double the amount of information. But and and sometimes, do you remember? I step back, right? So I don't actually have my hands on you, yeah. and that's where I'm like, wait, what? Okay, wait. What does that mean? Don't understand. And if they can't give me an answer quick enough, I, I say, I'm, I'm not talking about this. I don't know. Because then I can't tell. Is it for me? Is it like a message literally from my guides to me? Because when you're open, things are just going to happen and you don't know who they're for. So discernment's really, really important. And I really, um, really worked on that when I was working with Lisa. So I would say to answer your question again, after a very lengthy <laughs> answer, uh, she was probably my most influential. Okay. Yeah. 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 And for anybody who's curious, Lisa Campion is actually well regarded in the energy healing community. Uh -huh. Um, and she's actually in Massachusetts. Um, so if anybody's in Rhode Island now, Oh, she moved to Rhode Island. Moved to Rhode Island. Yeah. She's not really doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one sessions anymore. She's doing a lot of group healings and classes and writing. Yeah, she uh, so like you mentioned, she had two books. Um, they're also both available in audio format now and, and on Audible. Yeah. So if you, anyone's looking for more information, it's Lisa Campion, spelled last name is spelled C A M P I O N. Yep. And, and sorry, I, I pronounced that one right. I keep messing up <laughs> yours. No, no worries. We've been, we, <laughs> we've, been we've been friends for like three years and I always mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's, okay. it's a hard one. People get all, I'm terrible. When I do interviews with people, I almost always don't even introduce them by their first name because yeah. I always mess it up. Always. <laughs> now, one thing that I can attest to, which is actually really cool, when you're, you give the person being healed the option, do you want to hear it as I'm doing it or do you want to wait till the very end? Yeah. So you're letting them decide how they want to receive the healing and the, and the messages that they're supposed to be getting. Yep. Which is really yeah, some cool. people want to hear it, and 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 it's interesting because some of my clients will change that mm -hmm. per session. 
But it's like, you know, when you say, yes, I want to hear it in the moment, it's almost because you want to be able to hear it and release it in the moment. Yeah. And that's just what your body knows it needs. It's really interesting how this all this whole little thing works. <laughs> yeah, I, I tend to do that. <laughs> yeah, you like to talk. Yeah, you want to be involved. Um, and sometimes, you know, you've had some really, really deep, mm -hmm. badass sessions where we haven't talked until the end. Oh, yeah. So, so okay. sometimes you just have to, like, let it happen the way it needs yeah. to happen, you know? Yeah, totally. Awesome. Awesome. Now, mm -hmm. on the healing side, what are you currently working on? Or is there anything you want to like plug or promote? I know you have a book coming out in book September. Coming out. So, yep, if people are interested. So, the book is really, it's a memoir. Um, yeah. It's about um, trauma, chronic mm -hmm. pain, healing, death, loss, cancer, kind of like everything that's kind of hit my life. Yeah. Um, I got hit with migraines um, in 2000, pretty much the end of 2018, beginning of 2019, mm -hmm. and I pretty much closed my practice almost all of 2019. Yeah. Uh, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't work. I, I literally could barely even leave my house. And so that was a really big problem for me. <laughs> yeah. Not because I needed to work, because I needed the money, but more importantly, because I, I was like a recluse. I literally never left my house. That's how ill I was. And, and if anybody, you know, watching has ever had something like that happen, you know, you kind of lose your identity. You have to rebuild your whole self back after that. And, um, and then I have been in the, and I'm still in the process of rebuilding myself after that kind of, uh, crash and burn. I call it a crash and burn. And, um, it was a, it was, and I talk a lot about, you know, I, I have a couple chapters in there about my empath and, working on my clients after having not done my own trauma healing and what that did for my nervous system. But, but you know, it's really like a collection of hope really for anybody who's kind of has like chronic issues, chronic anxiety, chronic pain, chronic whatever. Um, and I, it's not a how to, but I do describe some of the methods I've used to, um, to kind of get on my feet. So that um, will likely be on Amazon and other booksellers in the fall. But if people want to get on the waiting list for like, you know, the early launch, which will probably be a discounted price, mm -hmm. they can go onto my website um, and they can click the join the book waiting list. Yep. So and that link will be available uh, in the description below of this video cool. when it airs. Oh, good. So, oh cool. Perfect. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, that I'll have, all, we're going to have like a, uh, you know, we're going to have all your handles. So website, oh, cool. link, any links, anything you want to do, we're going to, it's for, for you, Ashley, we're going to have available right there. So easy for everybody. Amazing. I love it. Yeah. So yeah. So that's pretty much what I'm working on now. Um, and I, and I got certified. I, I was always teaching people to meditate, you know, I was up in for people who didn't really have a practice. I was talking to them about that, but I decided to take it to the next level because that's kind of what I do. I got certified um, in primordial sound meditation, which I was using for like a year and I love, love it. For people who are watching, there's so many different forms of meditation that you can choose from. So many mm -hmm. that the list is like really long, oh, but yeah. I chose primordial sound meditation because it's mantra based. And I, because I have really bad untreated ADD, mm -hmm. I have, <laughs> have and still continue to struggle, as we all do, with staying focused in a meditation, right? When I first started to meditate and I just tried to literally get quiet, which everybody describes like, oh my God, I can't turn my brain off. Well, yeah. for somebody with untreated ADD, it's like even worse. So I needed the focus. I've always used mantra really or chanting. So when I found primordial sound meditation, I was like, oh my God, this is going to be amazing. It's so the mantra, it's a Sanskrit mantra. So, so it's in Sanskrit um, and it is the vibration. So the, so the word is the, is the vibration of the place I was born, the time I was born um, and the, to down to the minute I was born because the universe like we all know Om, right? Mm -hmm. Om. So Om is the universal primordial sound. And it's the collection of like the sounds that the universe making. Birds, you know, rain, like all those sounds. 
Does a tree make a sound when it crashes in the forest? Yes, it does. It's a primordial sound. Yeah. Um, and so it's the collection of all that. And underneath OM is 108 different sounds, be, depending on where the moon was and where the moon uh, turns and changes in all of those times, location, time, whatever, where you're born. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God, I need, I want this personal mantra. I want a personal mantra. So I went and I took the course and it was, it was a year and a half of meditation school and I learned so much that I can't even tell you. Um, and I love, love it. So I teach people, I give them their unique primordial sound and then I teach them primordial sound meditation. I've been doing it over Zoom um, since of COVID, but uh, hopefully getting a new office um, back in the fall. Whenever, we, whenever we can. Well, now we can stop wearing masks. I've been waiting for the whole mask. I couldn't do a session in a mask. Yeah, like it's, it's you, can. you can breathe well enough in it, but to be able to do the deep breath, yeah, and to get yeah. everything balanced out, it, it does become a challenge. Yeah, and I like right. So like when you're doing Reiki, you're like purposefully open. There's something about a mask that felt like I was covering. Literally, I mean, obviously we are, right? But I, yeah. so I couldn't do it. So anyway, back in-person sessions will probably happen in the fall. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And um, the primordial, because you've got me intrigued now with the primordial, because I usually do guided meditations, but this primordial thing sounds awesome. It's like so cool. It's literally the, it's the sound, you're chanting in your mind's eye. Mm -hmm. you're, you're using a mantra, a vibration that was literally the universe was making this sound the second you took your first breath. Yeah, and you did. You couldn't it, possibly get any closer to your soul. Yeah. Right? Oh, ooh, see, that sounds that sounds amazing. See, uh -huh. now I want to now I want to sign up for this. Yeah. So, so I know you were doing one from May into June. Is there another one that you have scheduled or lined up that people can sign? Yeah. Up? So what I'm trying to do is to record them so that people can do them on their own time. I like to learn like that too. Yeah. So they can be anywhere and be able to take the classes. So I should be done recording them in the next couple of weeks and then they're just gonna be on and I'm, I have to build a whole website that has like a little like uh, code that people can get in once they've paid. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that'll be done in the next month or so. Uh, I'll keep you posted. Oh, please do. That's gonna be awesome. And, and if you can sign up on the waiting list to, on my website mm -hmm. on a mailing list too to get notified. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, the other part of the conversation that we briefly touched on, I think we uh, we should double back to is you founded OneMission.org. I did. That is so cool. Yeah, so, thanks. Yeah, when I see, I never tied the two together. When I when I first started receiving healing from you, I remember the company that you were that you were doing the healing through and yep. all that. And then all of a sudden, I'm like. And I'd seen like the one, the, the buzz off for cancer yeah. and all that throughout the years, but I never tied the two together. Now all of a sudden yeah. I, we're, we were having a conversation and it's like, oh yeah, I found one admission. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I kept, so, so how that happened, by the way, mm -hmm. um, how, how I ended up, I originally started doing Reiki just for my one mission families. Yeah because I kind of felt like one mission was my purpose, right? So I would, I had like my massage table and my crystals and all my stuff in my one mission office. So when people would come in, I would close my computer down. I'd put like nice music on. I would tell my employees like, you know, try to keep it down because I would give free Reiki to, and I still do give free services to anybody who has a critically ill child. But, um, so that's kind of how it started. But then what was happening was they were giving my name out to their friends and family who I was charging obviously. Mm -hmm. And then, it, and then all of a sudden I had a business and I was like, oh my gosh, now I have this business. I have to like create a business. So I created Veda Healing mm -hmm. to, you know, to kind of take care of the masses, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I started the charity um, about a year and a half after Nicholas was diagnosed. So 2008, 2009, um, I started One Mission. And, you know, everybody always asks me, like, what inspired you? Like, obviously, Nicholas, having gone through what we went through. Mm -hmm. But I feel like, again, that's kind of like, life purpose discussion, right? Like, why did Nicholas become my child, right? Yeah. Right, so like you're a soul up in the ethers, you haven't come into human form yet. 
the way that I perceive that happening, right? You're in a soul, God, the universe, universal chi, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. source, says, okay, listen, do you want to go back into human form? And you're like, I don't know, what are my choices? And they go, okay, so you have these two lives you can choose from. In this life, these are all the people that you're going to travel with. This is all that's going to happen. This is all you're going to learn. This is option B. And you go, yeah, I'll travel with those dudes again. <laughs> Screw it. I'll take option A. And <laughs> and there's like um, contracts, soul contracts that you have with your core people. Nicholas is absolutely one of those people that I have a soul's contract with, right? He chose my husband, Ari, and I as his parents. And we agreed to help him to get well. And I believe that one mission was under that category of all the good things that were going to happen out of the suffering that we, were, we had to endure. Yeah. So, you know, so we get home and I don't know, like I just, it wasn't guilt that I felt, but I just knew all of these families that were getting diagnosed every day, showing up to the hospital. I was like, oh my God, like I, I can't leave them behind. Right, I need yeah. I need to help them, and so the hospital. But we were at Boston Children's Hospital, and they're our largest um, hospital partnership that we have. Mm -hmm. um, it and so it was like when we were there in the hospital for 188 straight days, we never went home for six months straight. Oh wow! Yep, uh, and so the hospital was like what you would picture a hospital. It was boring. There was nothing to do. But every now and then, they would make an announcement like, hey, so we're going to have tacos in the resource room. And we'd be like, oh my God, tacos? <laughs> You'd plan like your entire day around this catered meal that was coming in. And then they, you know, every now and then they'd be like, okay, we're going to drive the ice cream truck, you know, through the hallways. Whoever wants to come out and get ice cream, we'd be like, oh my God, the ice cream man's here. Like, it was just, you're so freaking bored in the hospital and you're so scared that any distraction and any any part of bringing like normal life back into the hospital was like a breath of fresh air. So anyway, long story short, I decide that I'm gonna start this charity. And I, cause I wanted to be able to do all of those things consistently for the families. So I called the hospital and I was like, listen, I'm gonna, start a charity. I'm going to raise you guys money. And I, but I want to make sure that the money goes to these specific things. And they were like, yeah, so we don't really do that. And I was like, yeah, no, we do. They were like, no, we don't. I'm like, mm -hmm, yep, we do. <laughs> we're doing it. It's happening. We're doing it. And they were kind of like, okay, they're there, Mrs. Hasiotis. We know how, to, how horrible it was for you to be in the hospital because they probably had gotten what, hundreds of those families? And I was like, no, you don't seem to understand. I'm gonna make this a big thing. Like, it's gonna be a big thing. And they were like, okay. So I made it a big thing. Um, and finally, after like two years of me consistently giving them like a quarter of a million dollars, half a million dollars, they were like, okay, so it's a big thing. And I was like, right, it's a big thing. So like, let's, just focus on these programs. Let's make living in the hospital less scary for kids. Let's bring in arts and craft. Let's bring in catered meals three times a week because the families have to pay to feed themselves. Mm -hmm. Like you don't think about this stuff when you when before you have to live in the hospital. Like the hospital feeds the child, but they don't feed mom and dad, and yeah. they definitely don't feed siblings at home. Like so, there's just like this whole emotional burden. There's a financial burden. And so I started one mission to really kind of take care of that for families. Um, and so we do that. We have about 30 programs that reside at, you know, Boston Children's Hospital, the Jimmy Fund. We have housing in Boston. Um, we have some programs at Hasbro in Rhode Island for families who can't travel because even though Rhode Island seems close to Boston, it's not for an average family or maybe yeah. for a family who can't afford to get here. So um, if they want a full list of our programs, you can go to onemission.org. But uh, yeah, so that was kind of, you know, um, why I started it. And then the buzz off is pretty much almost every single person knows of 
the buzz off that happens at Gillette Stadium, yep. but they don't always know that that's one mission. So it's us. Um, it, what, that's our largest fundraising event. And it happens every year at Gillette Stadium in June. Um, and hundreds or thousands, depending on the year, uh, people, we call them buzzies, they sign up to shave their hair um, and they fundraise for us. And then we all come together at one day at Gillette and everybody shaves their head. It's kind of like a big party. Um, and it's one of those events that you literally cannot describe to somebody. Talk about being an empath at that event, by the way. Oh yeah. It is like every emotion possible happens for one for each individual person when they're there. They're really, really nervous before they get there. Then it's like all excitement. Then they then they're bald. Then they're like shocked. And then they're so happy. And like normally they're shaving in honor of somebody. So then there's lots of tears and joy and gratitude. And we almost always have the families come to watch, you know, we invite some families to come and some of the kids even shave heads. Like you can't even put this event into words. Um, it's one of my favorite times of year to be able to hug strangers and watch strangers hug each other. It's just like off the charts. It's amazing. That's awesome. And what day is the buzz off this year? And so this year it has to be virtual again this yeah. year. It's June 13th. June 13th. Um, but there's still, I don't know when this is gonna air, but people can sign up even the day before, yeah. uh, and but next year it'll be back at Gillette. Praise God, we'll be back at Gillette next year, and we're gonna blow it out of the park with like an awesome, awesome event. So, so we're just gonna be so happy to be back with each other. Yeah. Um, oh, and yeah. that's normally the first or the second week in June. It depends on all sorts of concert schedules and all that stuff over at Gillette. Mm -hmm. But we're really excited to be back there. Yeah. And now on your website, you're actually able to donate. Uh, so if anybody wants to participate on, in the buzz off, um, you're able to sign up for that on the onemission.org website. You're also able to donate if you just feel drawn to just, you mm -hmm. know, to do that, or, you know, yeah. for no reason at all. You guys are also on Amazon Smile, which is yes. um, for anybody who's listening now, Amazon actually, I mean, there's a lot of things big corporations do that don't benefit. Amazon Smile is actually something good that is happening with a bigger corporation where you can through smile.amazon.com you can actually select um a charitable organization and one mission is available there so if anyone shops a portion of what you buy goes and benefits one mission yeah so that we actually make a lot of money out of that uh, every year so we we make almost twenty thousand dollars every year just from amazon smiles that is awesome. I know. I think it might be all of my shopping, but I'm not Mine sure. Too. <laughs> Thank you. My my Amazon addiction is I, I do it through Smile, so it's it might be a little off the charts, but at least some of it is going to, to go get something good, you know. That's what I'm saying <laughs> Jeff Bezos is like my brother from another mother. I'm like I don't know Amazon it. My kids are like, Mom, can we get all of them? Like I don't know Amazon it. Just. <laughs> <laughs> love it i oh, love it sorry. that is so cool yeah um, so yeah it's it you know so if anybody does know about amazon smile one mission is a great uh cause to do there as well um again the all the proceeds that they're receiving is to better and make life easier for people who are dealing with a horrible situation yeah. and you know and and the attempts to make life better for the families but also you know you guys invest in so much for 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 in the hospitals too so yeah yeah i mean we all our help now is from time of diagnosis for the entire family and now after diagnosis as well because you know that's one of the things people don't realize like you get home and like that's it the hospital isn't calling you to be like hey how are you are you okay how is getting back to work how is the finances? Like nobody's asking you that question. And that's typically when people tank. Think about fight or flight for a second, right? Yeah. Like you're in fight or flight for so long, then it stops. That's really when your body like releases and relaxes. It's typically when we start to have the emotions and the feelings and we don't really know what to do with them. And then no one's taking care of us. Yeah. And then trying to reacclimate back to life after a big event like that, it's really hard. So we have, I actually do interviews kind of like this for, yeah. um, you know, for, my, for our families. I interview therapists and yoga teachers and financial people. Um, unfortunately, for, 
for parents whose children have a critically, um, you know, like a critical condition like cancer, a lot of them end up going bankrupt. So I actually just did last week, I recorded how to go bankrupt because apparently there's like a finesse to that. I didn't realize. So yeah. anyway, um, so yeah, so we do these types of things for our families so that they can find resources. So if anybody's watching has a service um, or anything that would benefit parents who have kids of, have been critically ill, you know, reach out to me because I'd love to interview you. Um, you know, if you can have, you have something that will help them, some knowledge or anything, um, we'd love to talk to you. That'll be amazing. Yeah, and that's, it, it's, I think you hit something right on the head too. Sometimes when your child is sick, the, the main focus is not like, okay, you, you, it's like, all right, well, I got to go to work or I got to go do this. Your, your main focus is how do I get my kid better? Totally. And sometimes the job will fall by the wayside or sometimes you get backed up on medical bills or even bills in general yeah. or, you know, or the day-to-day -day stuff. And you guys being able to kind of cushion and buffer that for them yeah. is amazing. Oh my God. They're, first, we call it the shoebox effect, by the way. So like you're in the hospital, you come home for like a night or whatever, mm -hmm. passing ships with husband and wife, you know, and you get all these bills and you just go, I can't deal with this right now. And you literally throw it in a shoebox. And then, then you open up hundreds and hundreds of bills. Um, I, we've done some really, you know, sad, but cool things. Like we had to pay, um, like $800 in parking tickets for a mom. She, um, she lived in Boston, but couldn't take public transportation because her child was too young because of germs and everything when they're in cancer treatment. So she had to drive to Boston children's, um, to get treatment. And she was just, there was no place to park. She couldn't afford to park in the garage because you have to pay to park. So yeah. she would just like pull over <clears throat> on, the, on, Lans on uh, uh, Longwood Ave and just park just so she could get to the appointment on time. So she was accumulating all of these tickets and then one day got the boot. So then she couldn't get her child to treatment because she f couldn't drive her car. And so we got, a, 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 you know, we got alerted of that and we paid off her parking tickets and then we gave her money for like a month's, work, month's worth of parking. You just don't think about it. Like even yeah. though it's $10, but they, those kids have to go to clinic almost every day for treatment. That adds but, up, yeah. Yeah, it's like 50 bucks a week in freaking parking. Like for an mm -hmm. average family, like that's not okay. So, um, so yeah, there's all sorts of things that we've paid for funerals before, which is so, so sad. Um, and you know, sometimes kids have to get their legs amputated or whatever. We've put ramps in for housing, um, widened door frames so that they can use a wheelchair. We got one kid, um, a bike so that they could do PT with their prosthetic during yeah. COVID because they couldn't go to, you know, the, the physical therapy office. Mm -hmm. So we got her an exercise bike. So she, and she was, um, zooming her therapist. It was so cool. So um, just, you know, that's kind of what we do. Our tagline is whatever it takes. And it's literally like, we'll do whatever it takes to help a family. I love that. That yeah. is so, that is amazing. It's like, you know, again, like just to point out, I, I had heard of one mission because you see it on 7 News with Gronk getting his head buzzed yeah. off and a couple of the Patriots players and a couple of the regional athletes like from the Celtics or and yeah. some of the other teams do, doing the buzz off at Gillette. I and then meeting you and talking to you and getting healing work done on myself because you know I needed it at the time and I still do obviously but um and then tying those two together and just seeing the grander picture of it is amazing like the work that you do Ashley thanks I'm having fun I think I think <laughs> I think now I'm trying balance that's my new initiative at my own uh business here is oh, yeah. balance yeah absolutely Mm -hmm. Okay. Before we wrap up, um, is there anything you want to plug or promote? No, I mean, I think if people liked what we talk about, they'll love my book. Um, if they want more, if they're just like dying to know what the rest of the story is, they'll love the book. Um, if they feel inclined to take their own healing journey, you know, to like really take the bull by the horns, meditation is, as you know, the most profound way to um to heal ourselves mm -hmm. to get that information you know to be able to just calm our bodies down um they can sign up for class 
or I do personal sessions too. If people don't want to take a class, I can do personal sessions with people. So yeah, that's pretty much all I got. That's all I got to offer. What, uh, do you, what's the name of your uh, book title? I have, I'm picking between two titles right now. It's okay. either The Unspoken or What Lies Within. Those are both really good titles. <laughs> because it's what I came to understand from my migraines was that the buried emotions that I worked very hard and took a lot of energy to push down ultimately because our thoughts are energy right and yep. energy cannot be destroyed it only can be moved around yep. that they were trying to get out and so i spent a lot of time and energy over all these years working 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 i work so hard i'm gonna do all these great things literally ignoring everything that was inside my body being like we're in here we need to talk we need to talk and i never really did i acknowledged that my life was troublesome but I wasn't ever saying things like I was abused or this was traumatic. Mm -hmm. um, and so the unspoken kind of gives voice to like the stuff I didn't talk about and what lies within is kind of the same thing. Like it's in there. Yeah. <laughs> it's in there. Um, so I don't know. We're going to, me and the publisher and I are going to iron that out in the next couple of weeks. Nice. Nice. Yeah. And I, I'm excited. Again, I'm excited to read it. I'm a fan. Uh, of everything you're doing. So I, I am personally excited to see what when it comes out in September. I'll be signing up on that pre-order list real cool. soon. Um, awesome. Now, before we wrap up, uh, where can everyone find you? Again, these links will be available in the video description below. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you want to fire away, what where, yeah, where we so, can find you. Yeah, uh, so charitiesonemission.org. Yep. If they want to get interested in, you know, or learn more about the buzz off, that's buzzforkids.org. But they, you can find each website from the other website. Um, I'm Ashley Hasiotis at, um, I'm just ashleyhasiotis.com or the easier one is VEDA, V-E-D-A-Healing.com. Oh, I love it. And then at you'll put my Instagram. Oh, I'm going to My Instagram is yep. Ashley has love. Mm -hmm. I like that because I couldn't find Ashley Hasiotis. Apparently, there's another ha Ashley Hasiotis in the world. And I'm but butchering her name, even, too. <laughs> so, so annoying. And she doesn't even use it. I'm like, whatever. So anyway, I'm Ashley Has Love on Instagram. I'm Ashley Hasiotis on Facebook. And I have uh, all sorts of whatever it is. LinkedIn. I never use it. But. And you have a YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel, Veda Healing. Oh, wonderful. And on Veda Heal, on that YouTube Veda Healing, you'll find interviews like this where Ashley talks with other healers and other people that can help you get a step forward in healing. A wonderful resource that she has on her YouTube channel. Oh, um, I forget about that. Oh, yeah. Ashley, thank you so much. I Woo! appreciate you making the time for me. This was wonderful, and I cannot wait for everything that's coming up. Yeah, me too. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks Thank for having you. me. Thank you so much.